Hi, this is Dr. Shweta and I am a neurologist and welcome to Limitless Brain channel. So where we talk about neuroscience in everyday life, uh, this is my favorite topic. So this is going to be one of the topics which I had ignored for a long period of my life and this is on meditation. So I was 15 and that was the time when I asked my parents, can you tell me why am I born? What is the purpose of me coming into this life? My parents were both into medical field and they wondered what kind of a question is that? Now as a young kid, they did not want to uh, tell me anything which was voodoo. So they said, okay, possibly you will find somebody who will answer you that question. And lo and behold, uh, a spiritual teacher came into my life. Uh, she was just the perfect, uh, I felt, because that was uh, the time when I had so many questions and so much to ask, etc. And then there became my, there, there began my uh, spiritual journey. In that process, you know, my uh, spiritual teacher would teach meditation. I would go travel with her and uh, the morning, the first thing, 4 a.m., we call it uh, a special time in the Indian Hindu tradition, etc. So where you wake up and then you do the meditation. I would always tell her that please do not take me because I am happy horizontally meditating. Now this kept on happening for years long. I would travel to her to various countries. We would go to a lot of countries and every single time in the morning, this is my answer. Now many years passed, I, I was obviously, uh, I would say lazy to understand meditation, there came a crisis in my life, a personal deep crisis where there was a lot of pain. So I had this young childhood friend, uh, 20 years of relationship and suddenly one fine day it just cranked and the pain, pain of such a breakup, you know, often the breakup is uh, told to only romantic relationships and breakup is often connoted into these kind of things but a parent child a boss uh, employee a two a two friends breaking up these are also the real breakups which can happen so what I was feeling was deep, deep, deep pain. And with that pain, obviously, you know, somebody just alluded to me and that was an eye opening that why don't I meditate? So with that thing, you know, I started to remember my childhood memories that, oh, I had the opportunity to learn meditation, but I was not serious and I did not pay attention to any of the thing called meditation. So literally like a phone a friend, I call my spiritual teacher up and I say, I think it's time for me to learn meditation. And believe me, any time, of the day in your life you feel meditation is for you meditation is for you so meditation is such a misunderstood or such a complexly put up subject uh, which which is actually the way uh, we see it today however it is indeed extremely simple so in this current 15 minutes we will try to break down the elements of meditation there's a lot inside it there are lots of techniques etc but we will keep on chatting but my entire focus for the coming 15 minutes is going to be giving you the flavor of what is happening inside the brain when we talk of meditation now there are many 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 different varieties by the way there is no formal definition of meditation meditation has been tried to be studied in various concept with a definition but it's there is literally a personal lack of consensus in the literature on the meditation and and seemingly there are so many different varieties such as uh, spanda dhyan mantra dhyan transcendental meditation tratak meditation Arup Dhyan, uh, Bhava Dhyan, Preksha Dhyan, Jain Dhyan, Kriya Yoga, many, many, many techniques. But my job here today is to simplify this and put it in the right context and the right way of what really is happening in the brain when we meditate. Now, there are tons of benefit of meditation overall if we look into the healthcare part of it or the health benefits part of it. The very first benefit that you can have is you can lower your blood pressure. We measure something called the heart rate variability. So when I, I am breathing, my heart rate is changing and this is very, very important. If my heart rate variability is low, that's not healthy for me. I need high heart rate variability to keep myself healthy. I need my blood pressure to be optimum. I need my pulse rate to be optimum. So when all the studies have been done in the literature related to meditation, meditation have been shown to have all the beneficial effect. It reduces the stress. It has been shown to also impact uh, sugar lowering uh, properties in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus. It has been shown to have also impact on headaches. People with migraines, people who suffer from chronic tension headaches, meditation has been shown to have a significant benefit in these patients. 
also there was a study which was done on the age related degeneration every time as the year goes by as we are uh, getting a old there is a percentage of the cells um, roughly about 10000 cells which is reducing every single day of our life but people who are regular meditators actually stall it or keep it stable or play to those cells so essentially it is helping in the brain to stop the degeneration there was a very popular uh, monk whose brain was studied uh, and you will find a lot of data pertaining to him it was mingyur scan which was done his brain cells were studied and the entire aging of the brain was derived with him as well as the people who were controls or people who were not meditating so what was found between the mingyur's brain and other people's brain was very interesting it was found that there was a gap of 10 years so even at the age of 40 his brain was 30 years older 30 years younger so definitely if you want to talk of longevity of the brain you want to live longer you want your brain to be sharper you want your brain to be fitter you want to be having a great memory you want to have super focus super attention meditation is the way to go now all these are wonderful studies which have been over and over time again denoting the benefits of it but in the lab what we saw and we personally also conducted a lot of experiments with the meditation and i'm a great great fan of explaining this and you will keep seeing the same uh, thing being explained a couple of times because this is such an important concept now there are three brains which are operational as i'm talking to you my one brain is called the brain stem which is at the back of the head i have a slightly upper brain called the emotional brain also called the limbic brain so limbic brain is essentially allowing me to get to the threat to understand what is good for my survival it is always in the emotional state of either fight flight fear or freeze it is a protective mechanism and also obviously allowing me to care allowing me to have all the positive emotions as well and then if i go much higher there is the prefrontal cortex or the frontal lobe now prefrontal cortex or the frontal lobe has been called the seat of human consciousness the prefrontal cortex is all about what is good for me what is bad for me should i do this or should i not do this it is about the judgment it is about the morality it is about the intuition that i can have it is about choices it is not about stopping the thoughts of the mind it is not that you can pause your mind mind's own property is to keep on having a continuous flow of thoughts so in this session when we do often meditation people come back and say that hey all the to do list came in all the things that i did not want to think were part of my mind this is a natural property you cannot just tell your mind that hey stop thinking which is which is what we need to break the myth when we understand meditation meditation is not about relaxation meditation is not about sitting or sleeping or lying down or dancing it is not about the physical artifact or the physical thing that you do meditation is not about putting a reins on your mind these are all the preparation of meditation so when we take these sessions in the limitless brain meditation we often say that do not do meditation meditation must happen now this is a very very important thing to note that you don't need to do or pursue meditation meditation happens and this happens over and over over and over time when you start to practice it yes sitting is very important stilling and actually making a, 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 a absolute vertical uh, posture is also very important because now you want your mind and the body to be still that also has an influence and impact on the outcome of the meditation yes you want sometimes some soothing music music to play because you want to get into the states from the beta which is the high functioning brain wave to alpha which is just a mild gentle sinusoidal wave to a little deeper slow wave called theta and sometimes people do fall off to sleep which is delta so in the lab when we studied a few meditations so what we essentially do is we take a few controls where they are just playing some music versus a guided meditation which is happening with the subjects and we uh, use something called the eeg i have an ecg which measures my heart rhythm same way i have an eeg which measure, measures my brain rhythm so when we see the brain rhythm for the people who are in the control group who are just listening to any music 
versus the people in the subject group who are actually uh, using the meditation or the guided audio there is a difference which we see in both the groups now what is that difference that difference is very very stark in fact i was surprised when my own uh, study was done so i had a primary scan which was done uh, which was baseline and then after 5 minutes of this guided meditation which is called the limitless meditation and you can see the details below after that was my scan taken again and what was seen was the theta which is the slow rhythm in the brain suddenly became high amplitude theta so we do something called the power of each of the brain uh, waves and we take it to the lab and we study it there was a marked difference in that theta and for most of the people the rise in the alpha and rise in the theta was seen now i was talking earlier about the same topic that most people do not even close their eyes in the entire day they do not allow the alpha to form they do not go a little deeper to allow the theta to form so where is the question of their meditative experiences now some people say i saw a blue light i saw a yellow light i saw a red light now please remember you can see anything you can have the sensory experience or feeling of levitation or anything please do not get hooked on to that because the real real meditation is not about uh, the just the health outcomes that i talked about or just the uh, brain outcomes that i just spoke about it is often deeper it is often spiritual in nature and we will keep on exploring this topic as we go along but this was a very quick glimpse of what is really happening in the brain so if you are completely naive to meditation like i was do not think twice do not worry about the type and the technique and the hula of it just start somewhere sitting 5 minutes eyes closed watching your mind just separating yourself from that mind because i think this is the space that we are talking about and by the way breathing helps a big 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 time we will be talking on one of the neuro breathing sessions about the types of the breathing and how breath forms the bridge to you and the mind my last thought to you is we never say i mind or we never say i brain we always say my mind and my brain do you know why do we do that because i am not the mind unfortunately if my mind is sad i become sad if my mind is happy i become unhappy we have falsely connoted ourselves and attached to the mind but that is not the case so i as a witness of the mind and the brain and this is the space that we need to keep creating when i do the right breathing technique and the meditation so keep following us and we keep giving the tips related to the neuroscience with dr shweta aradhya